Welcome back, Nick Lenders. Comic Corner Classic Class Non Classic. This is episode number 1221 and double shot number 1115. I have two Marvel trades. One is kind of an end of an era, well, the end of the first volume of a particular series, and the other is the start of an era. Okay, first up it is New Avengers Volume 10 Power. This collects New Avengers number 48 to 50 and Secret Evasion Dark Reign. Yeah, the Secret Invasion Dark Reign, the story they included in this one, because it was a multiple story book. This book was pretty much the debut of the Cabal. And I'm not really a big fan of the art style they threw in this book. Well, actually, it's Alex Malia's artwork. Yeah, it's kind of weird how he draws some of his characters. How he draws Frost looks really good. It's just how he draws Namor is left to be desired. For one thing, he draws Namor as a guy looking like he has just shaved in a while. Because also. He gives it. He gives him this look. I'm not really sure of why Alex Maleev did this for. It's kind of odd he did this, but yeah. And Emma Frost points out that hey, I'm Namor, and she's like, yeah, I know that. He's like, because this is for, he, 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 from his perspective, he probably thinks the first time they met. And Emma Frost is like, no, we met before. They actually explain this in issue of a Karen Gillan on um, the Kenny Exum run, where they met while she was still part of the actual Hefar Club. The other members aside from Namor and Emma Frost are, believe it or not, Doctor Doom, who was the first person Emma Frost meets before she meets up with Namor. They also have Parker Robbins, aka the Hood, and finally their boss, Namor. And he makes some promise. Oh yeah, also Loki's here too. In his female form. Yep, Loki is a woman. And what does he promise all these people? Doctor Doom, his country. He gets extra. He gets to go home. No problem. Oh yeah, it makes people convinced that that Stark was under a, a scroll virus. <laughs> yeah. Let people buy that nonsense. He to go home. No problem. Loki gets wants to go home to As wants Asgard. Fine, you can have Asgard. Emma Frost, get the register. Probably his Wisconsin ventures. And they also offer the same thing for the Hood, which he accepts that. Well, eventually, of course. And what about Namor? You want your city? Fine, take it. And it's a quick, brief meeting. And then, of course, it leads into basically where, like, after Emma Frost and the Hood leave, basically Doc Doom and Namor briefly talk to each other. Yeah, these two have known each other for a long time. And they're old acquaintances. They're not that close. Like, I rule the land, you rule the seas. And Namor is like, that's fine. And then we see Namor back at, not Namor, uh, Norman Osborn at, at Thunderbolts Mountain, where he's confronted by the swordsman, Philip von Strucker. Actually, it's uh, Andrea, uh, An Andreas von Strucker. Yes, one of the two sons of Baron Wolfgang von Strucker. We're basically accusing him of lying to him and the fact he never often plays in the Avengers. So what does no one do? Pulls out his sword, stabs him with it, and throws him out of the window. And that's the last scene of that swordsman because he's dead. This was back in 2008, uh, actually 2009. He's been dead now for 11 years, and Marvel is no hurry to bring this guy back. They would make all these other characters who died, but not that one. Nope. On oh, Keisha Curry still, why is he at Thunderbolts Mountain? Well, that was something that was set up after the events of Civil War One, where Thunderbolts was made into a government agency. This was like this for quite a while, actually. Though, basically, no one Osmond sort of revamped Thunderbolts. It was like this during the war, and that was Chris O's Gage run for the Thunderbolts book, where they were like this, and then they eventually became a Black Ops team under Jeff Parker's run. And in Athens of Siege, they became sort of Marvel's version of the Suicide Squad up to the book's end. And then when the book came back, when that version with, with the classic lineup came back in 2016, they became like the classic version. Now, in case you're curious, though, how did Thunderbolts get their mountain? They apparently won this place as a trophy for beating a version of Masters Evil. Yep, that's how they got this place. Yeah, they've had this place since, since like... Uh, since like 2000, believe it or not. Yeah, they had this book, they had this place for a long time. Heck, this is their base for a long time. 
Yes. They actually changed bases to the cube once Noah Osmond became director of Hammer. Because once they became director of Hammer, Thunderbolts Mountain basically wasn't used for a while. It did briefly pop up in the pages of New Avengers post uh, Fear Itself. After that, that's it. But in the case, what goes on here? Basically, the three-part storyline is simply put, well, Luke Cage is looking for his daughter. And, of course, we have sort of a sort of a semi-new lineup. Now, Bucky Barnes, the current Captain America in this book, he joins the team along with Mockingbird, the real Spider-Woman. Iron Fist actually leaves the team with a storyline. Yeah, he actually does occasionally help out this, but he does not really part of the team after this storyline. And so Jessica Jones basically looks for her missing baby. Luke Cage basically has to go, they search everywhere, and eventually no, he has no choice but to look, go to Norman Osborn, which he, <laughs> get this, basically also takes back the crowbar he took from the frickin' wrecker. Yes, I'm uh, I'm surprised the fact he still kept the damn thing. Yeah, he took this from the wrecker back in the breakout storyline. Oh my gosh, it was so fun to see that again. Of course he leaves, and then of course he also gets back his baby, which, uh, was in the hands of a Jarvis scroll, which it was killed by freaking Bullseye. And in issue 50, a shocking thing happens. No one Osborne debuts his, his Dark Avengers, which has everybody upset. Of course, they, of course, no, and of course, Luke Cage points out, though, yeah, those are the Thunderbolts, not the Avengers. Of course, Moonstone is posing as Miss Marvel. No one Osborne is the Iron Patriot. Bullseye is Hawkeye, of course, when. Hawkeye, so yeah, I don't accept myself or Kate Bishop basically as Hawkeye. I'm not accepting him as Hawkeye. And Spider's like, who's that Spider Man there? It's Matt Gargan. He doesn't know it. And it's like, and then it's like, who's this other Wolverine? And then Wolverine admits, that's my son. Yep, that's his son. And to take down the one Osborne, so they basically chickened into a battle at, of all places, the Hellfire Club. Yes, which the this one they this one been banned for some time. When was it abandoned? I have no idea because I think the last time prior to this, the Hellfire Club popped up in a Marvel comic book was actually during Chris Claremont's run. Well, his third era he did his third run he did for Kenny X Men. That was the last time I can think of prior to this that, that the Hellfire Club showed up. So instead of fighting Dark Avengers, they are fighting the Hood and his gang of criminals. Yep, and it's a big, humongous brawl. Basically, a group of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, let's see, six, seven. I'd say about eight people, basically, are battling all these Avengers, uh, all these all these criminals. Also, the Fantastic Four briefly show up in the storyline to help look for the skull, which they do pop up in the next story arc as well, but that's that's much, that's how much it is. And, of course, they bring up what happened in the Seek of Asian Fantastic Four miniseries which actually was damaged during the actual scroll invasion. Oh, in case you're curious though, this is a dark rain tie-in for New Avengers because after this is Search for Supreme, Powerless, which has the characters empowered, and of course Siege. Mm -hmm. I'll give this book roughly a 9.5 out of 10. Fantastic book. Ben does a great job with this. Now, <clears throat> Billy Tan does the artwork for 48-50. Now, final thoughts on this particular era. Oh my gosh. This is a run that a lot of people didn't like very much. I mean, I personally loved it. Of course, this all started with this right here. The Breakout, which by the way, they never went, they never actually went out to people. They tried to get the person who caused the Breakout in the storyline, but they went after him. This I got recently for about 25 bucks. Yeah, but this is just the hardcover of the original storyline. And... Volume 2, 3, here's 4, I don't have 5 because of our review already, it's a Civil War 1 tie-in, here's 6, 7, 8, Nine. This is ten. Eleven. Twelve. Yeah. 
powerless as to bringing like what if basically into continuity why people lost their powers and then finally the book that ended this particular run the siege tie yes when it comes to this era i love this era of the new avengers like, yes, I am going to finish up the, the Volume 2 really soon. And I've already viewed 3 and 4, so I'm not really worried about that. So technically, in a way, there's still one new Avengers trade left. Yep, there's one more left. My final thoughts on this era is that it's a good era. Really good. Lasting 65 issues and put in about 14 books. Now, that's a question I think a lot of people have asked. Like, when was the last time Marvel actually put had... A trade series lasts more than like five or six books. This one, obviously. And there's also been a recurring joke for the past eight years that Marvel is afraid of the number 50. Yes, they seriously are. Though lately they they basically have loosened that because they've had some books end at issue 50, like Spider-Man Deadpool, Old Man Logan. But yeah, that was a minor gag for years. The people, Marvel was afraid of not only issue 50, but also issue 100. Yeah, because they had to keep hitting the restart button. Though they had restart button after this, basically, after the events of Siege, with Bendis to as a writer, they were different artists. Yep. Now moving on to the start of a brand new era. We have Thor, Volume 1, The Devourer King. This collects the first six issues of the current volume for Thor, written by Danny Kotis. Now, the book does start off basically with Thor, what he looked at the... Now, this is not how he starts off basically looking at the cover. Yeah, that's not how he starts off here. He starts off with a different look. Now, you have Nick Keaton on the artwork. Thing starts off basically with Millionaire being thrown around the galaxy. And eventually ended up in the hands of Thor. In other words, I basically say, what the... Hey, can I have a Sharpie? And then we see Thor, where he got a full beard, he's still got the middle arm, and the eye patch. Which he has is just for this opening issue. And also, Lady Sif has taken up the role of her, her, her brother's role as the protector of Bifrost. Why in the world that she would do it? Uh, it's not exactly explained. They do explain about the ravens in here, which is a very weird retcon for them. And then, of course, everything's all... Fine for Thor. And then Galactus pops up at Asgard. And he's like, Galactus, what are you doing here? And he's like, it's coming. He's like, what? The Black Winter. <laughs> I liked the Black Winter. Apparently, this was an entity created back in the 60s. That apparently Danny Coates decided to bring in for some reason. I'm not really sure why. So, when Galactus wakes up later, what does he do? Well, of course, they also have Sephiroth for Surfer pop up in here. In his black form that happened in the Silver Sword Black series. And Thor, they do something unthinkable for Thor. They turn him into a Herald of Galactus, which apparently restores his arm and his eye. Also gets rid of his beard. Makes his hair really long. And he maintains his look currently. Now, he did maintain the, 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 the arm and the golden eye patch briefly at the War Realms. Like in the Avengers book. And then Avengers, they actually acknowledge what happened here eventually. So, basically, Thor basically is working with Galactus to go to these various planets for him to consume them so he can basically build this dark power, take on the Black Winter. And then eventually he does take on the Black Winter. And apparently, now they do kind of explain basically about, about Galactus' backstory where he's basically more formally exploring and glean from another universe that... According to the way the way Danny Cole is right, it says, it's that, oh yeah, the Black Winter is responsible for destruction of Glean's universe. And then he has a very weird retcon when it comes to Galactus. That he is a herald of the Black Winter. And Galactus is like, what? How is that possible? Oh yeah, and also, Th Galactus had this prediction that Thor would kill him. And he did. Thor kills Galactus, and then Thor kills the Black Winter, supposedly, and then he goes home and moats. Yeah, 
Really good story. Also, we have the Cosmic Ghost that pop up in here. Yeah, the Cosmic Ghost, because then it goes, loves this character. He pops up everywhere. Heck, he popped up in just his last book. He did prior to this in the Guardians of the Galaxy book. Yeah, and believe it or not, this book just started just this year. Yes, just this year this started. Now, some of these issues were actually delayed due to the pandemic. But for a start for this run, it's really good. Though it's very weird. Like, okay, so you kill off Galactus. Wow. Like, apparently Marvel's got balls now they kill off characters killed by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Yep. Though without the first character he's killed, had killed off in a book that he wrote that's created by Stanley Jack Kirby. Because he also killed off Ronan the Accuser and Death of the Humans. Oh, I give this book roughly a 9.5 out of 10. Really good book. Loved it. That's one thing I love about Danny Kellis' book. He makes books so interesting that he makes a, an excellent read. And makes it so that the story feels epic, even though it's very self-contained. Yeah, he did the same thing for his Guardians run and Death in Humans, a lot of their books. He even does it with, with his run for Venom. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if he did a storyline where he had Thor meet up with Venom at some point. That would be interesting. Yep. Though, Jason Aaron never did a cross between the X-Men and Thor for some reason. I don't know why, but he didn't. Even though that Jason Aaron has finished writing Thor with War Realms, he's still technically writing him in Avengers. Kind of like how Scott Snyder, even though when he finished up his run for Batman, he still wasn't, he didn't finish writing Batman because he wrote him in Justice League. So it's a very similar format with that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, in case you're curious still what the Black Winter looks like. Okay. Well, this is his, well, one of his forms. Yeah. Well, he looks like frickin' Thor. Yeah, I'm not really sure why he looks like this, but he does. Also... We also have this weird thing where apparently uh, when the Black Winter basically shows Thor an illusion... And he runs into various people from his past. The first people he runs into is Gore. I'm like, really? Why would you bring back this guy for? Like, of all villains, why would you bring back the first villain created by Jason Aaron? And, of course, you also have Loki in his classic Jack Kirby attire, which, that's freaking fantastic. Of course, you also have Mogog. Yes, Mogog, a character who's dead. He got killed off in Thor 700. We also have... Malachi the Curse, another character who's dead. Annihilus, a character of Thor. I don't think Thor's ever fought him. Doctor Doom, Juggernaut. I think it's supposed to be Surtur, Mephisto, and freaking Apocalypse. I get why Apocalypse, because Thor's actually fought Apocalypse before, not in his main book. Nope, he actually fought him in, in a flashback for Kennedy Avengers. Mm -hmm. But I gotta say, great start for this run. Other people might have might be mixed about this start of this run because it kind of basically where at the in the very first issue, Danny Coase undid something that the Jason Aaron did with the with the the middle arm and the eye basically restoring him. I don't have a really big problem with it at all. I mean, a lot of people were predicting that when the way that Jason Aaron was saying it when the case of King Thor, but it's possible that doing that kind of wiped away that future or simply just an alternate timeline, that give or take, but. Two really good trades. Okay, so that's it for Stickler View. Next view is going to be more Kangaroo Time of Love is War. That'll be up soon, okay? Along with my reviews for the spinoff series for Inuasha, which is Yumi Princess Half and Case Closed. And I think that'd be a video stack I think of, okay? But do this next video. Bye.